Yud is good, yo, it's your boy Ty back here with another video. And in this video today, we are going to be ranking the best centers in NBA 2K22, my team, on a tier list. Now, the center position in general, you guys can look up and down this list, is not super strong. I mean, we've included even some power forwards like KG, like Tim Duncan, to, to try to kind of strengthen this list. But overall, guys, this is a very, very weak position. Now, before we dive any further into this video, again, there are some power forwards, especially good power forwards that will make this list, even such as like a Jaron Jackson Jr., but it is mainly the primary center position. Make sure to smash that subscribe button if you are new to the channel. We're on the road to 90,000 subscribers. Hopefully, we can hit that in a couple or a few months here, definitely by 2K23. So, I'm going to start off here with Al Horford now. Here's the big, here's the tough part is I don't know how good Al Horford is for this specific list, right? I know Al Horford's a card that personally I would never use. I'd never recommend you guys to use him, but I mean, he does have some things going for him, right? He can stretch the floor a little bit, has the Hall of Fame brick wall. Defensively, he's not great because he's slow, but I mean, he has decent enough badges. Al Horford's not incredible. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Their card's not great. But he's not terrible in 2K, and that's the thing about it. With set shot five, which I don't love, hurts the card a little bit. Got Al Horford out of clutch time. You probably aren't running him. It's just that simple. Alonzo Morning, we're gonna drag him to B tier at least right now. Now, Alonzo Morning is a collector level reward in for his time. Maybe it was okay. The time is not now. Now, still he's he's fine, right? He's definitely better than Al Horford. And may Al, maybe Al Horford is D tier, or maybe maybe Alonzo Morning is going to end up being that a tier caliber player that's something we will see but i mean a tier b tier kind of hovering in that range doesn't have a great release decent enough three ball though and the card's not bad again for his time was really solid set shot 17 with the weird upper is not great though andre drummond our next a tier player here's the problem though i don't think andre drummond is obviously s tier but I like Andre Drummond a little bit more than Alonzo Mourning just because I like his defense a little bit more. I think as just uh, his ability to defend is just that little bit better than Alonzo. Maybe Alonzo Mourning is B tier, Andre Drummond A tier. I think that's where I'd lean. I think the majority of people that, I mean, are watching this video would agree that Andre Drummond is better than Alonzo Mourning. Andre, Andre Drummond is, I mean, just that little bit wider. Maybe he's not better than Alonzo, but I think based on what I've seen outside of shooting, Andre Drummond just gives you that little bit more. Barney Arnie, our next player here. Is he B tier? That's where I'd kind of lean. Is he better than Al Horford, though? That's kind of the question we do have to ask ourselves. I mean, a little bit faster, way better of a shooter, probably not quite as good on defense. But I think he does do a little bit more and has a little bit better of a release than a guy like Al Horford to be in B tier. Now, is he better than Alonzo Morning? Obviously, going to shoot the ball better, going to be worse than the defensive end of the court. That's really a debate to be had. I never really liked Andre Bargnani. I never really used him, but you guys are going to see. We've got some really garbage men on this list. And so, I mean, maybe we'll move Al Horford down, Bargnani down a tier. That's where we're going to go for now. But again, we'll probably combine some tiers as we go through it. Andrew Bogut, man. Is, this, is, this, is he a garbage man or is, does he provide something? Can't shoot, can't run. Yes, he's got great interior defensive badges, 22 base badges. The card's not very good. I think he is on the level of Al Horford. If you want to say he's better than Barnyardi, you maybe can. But the problem is he only has 22 total badges. And I mean, that really limits how good a card can be if you only give him 22 total badges. I mean, nobody's going to badge up a card. So a card with 22 badges is really not doing much for you. Let's have some decent enough defensive badges. I didn't include Anthony Davis on this center tier list because a lot of people probably do want to run AD at the center position. I think he's better at center on current gen than next gen, but on both, I mean, he's a top center in the game. I think the mashing meta in my team, yes, it's overpowered right now, but it's going to eventually be just become a little bit outdated. And I don't want to say like outdated with like people aren't going to do it anymore, but it's just going to become that stretch big type of game, especially if you give AD some interior scoring bad badges. I wish he had Hall of Fame back down Punisher because that's the badge that if you get a switch on next gen, that can literally be so cheesy. Other than that, though, AD's going to shoot the ball well, play incredible defense. If you want to play him a power forward, obviously you can. 
but he can he's just a jack of all trades i mean the dude can do no wrong on the basketball court artist gilmore i think gives you a little bit more than andrew bogan and i mean this dude's a giant in 2k he gives you a little bit more is a little bit faster a little bit better than on, on the defensive end of the court has a few more badges my question to you guys is is artist gilmore bad enough to put in a c tier my answer i don't think so because he's seven two i think because he's seven two if you if you're one of those people that just hates getting mashed artist gilmore is going to hold his own against the likes of a yao against the likes of a chris Stapps on the interior that just wants to mash you uh, artist is going to hold, hold his own he definitely is good height good wingspan a lot of people liked running this amethyst card early on in 2k just because the dude was a giant now the diamond's a little bit better especially if you do give him monty williams that boosts the speed as well as interior defense artist gilmore b tier next up we do cr vitas sabonis now sabonis has is he one of the players that has the longest longevity in 2k i mean is he Yes, defensively, he's not going to be the best. He has 84 interior, which is not great. Interior badges aren't great. But he is 7'3 with a 7 to 6 wingspan with a base 43 badges. He, Andre Drummond might have to be moved down to B tier. I think that's what I'm going to have to do. And Arvita Sabonis is just in there at A tier. His ability to stretch the floor, I know he's not fast, but his ability to stretch the floor, be 7'3, be able to mash has decent enough stamina. Arvita Sabonis was one of the most underrated cards when he came out. People didn't appreciate him enough. And it starts with me. I really did not appreciate this card enough. He is pretty solid in my team, especially if you don't really need speed that much at the center position. If you do need speed, Artis Gilmore's the guy I'd lean to, but man, Arvita Sabonis gives you the ability to stretch the floor. Bam Adebayo up next, and I mean, does this card really do too much for you guys? I mean, he came out on early November, 6, 9, 7, two weeks, man. Decent enough three ball, decent enough speed, but he will get mashed. Like, I know he's got Intimidator, I know he's got Brick Wall, but he will get mashed because he's only 6'9". I mean, you come up against Yao, it is going to be a nightmare for a guy like Bam out of Bayou. I don't think I can go any higher with D tier. I, I just don't think I can. Yes, he provides something else on the court, but with him being 6'9", like a, a, not a great interior, an 88 interior, not, you know, 95 or anything, just think his ability is is not quite where it needs to be big ben wallace a card that when he came out was really good the problem is he came out on october 15th yes i mean in general he's fine right he has 29 base batters that is fine 25 three ball 87 speed defensively he's really solid but the problem is he, he's just a little outdated i mean is he better than a guy like andrew bogut maybe maybe he's that tier but he's only 6'9 i'm gonna put him in d tier because i don't think the card is absolutely worthless i don't think he's probably the worst card on this list the diamond bill russell is definitely a card that we're gonna spend a little while talking about that he might even go up a tier i mean five out of the famous 32 on gold four on silver six ten seven four wingspan i know bill russell is not the tallest but he's good on the offensive end because he can shoot defensively has basically everything you could want set shot 17 obviously is not great but especially his set shot 17 with his upper is definitely weird i do think he's on that arvita sabonis type level yes they're completely opposites right sabonis is a mash man bill russell is more of that quick guy both think they are a tier centers in my team though bill Walton, he's gotten slandered way too much like i i, I know bill Walton might not be the best card in the game but everybody just loves to slander this card. And is he good? The perimeter worries me a lot. No, he's not good. But he's not a garbage man. I do think he's a C-tier player. I think he's better than Al Horford. I think he's better than Andrew Bogut. I think C-tier is where he belongs. Lacks quite a bit of thing, quite a lot of things. But, I mean, he does have jump shot 37. Can stretch the floor a little bit. Card's not terrible. When I had to use him to grind XP, it's not like he was an absolute liability on the court. Bob McAdoo, another A-tier center now McAdoo is not a card I'd probably recommend you guys playing at the center position but again I, I recommend him at the power forward but pretty similar to Bill Russell only difference Bob McAdoo can have a little less of a three ball better speed stuff like that can handle the ball uh, with the best one but the biggest difference here way less of a three ball but a smoother release fundamental dribble style can handle the ball this Bob McAdoo might not be it because he's had three balls quite not quite high enough Let's say we get a Bob McAdoo in March or April. Expect him to be a top power forward in 2K. Talk about a garbage, man. 
here we go. I mean, I literally threw this card on this list because he is a legit garbage man. This dude cannot do anything on the court. Day one in my team, he wasn't bad because he could mash, he could do some things. Problem is, it's no longer day one. Brad Daugherty is literally F tier. Brooke Lopez, our next center here. I've, I'll be the first to tell you guys. I have not used Brooke Lopez enough. Like, I, I haven't. I've, I have, For the Pink Diamond centers, out of the playoff push stuff, I've always been super high on DeAndre. And I haven't really used Brooke too much. It's only fair to give Brooke that speed boost. Because this is really what you're looking at. Seven feet tall, 99 interior, really good block, really good rebounder, good enough defensively. I mean, obviously the speed is not great, but here's the deal, guys. He can't get chef, but he comes with limitless, high three ball, decent enough rebounder. Maybe I need to give Brook Lopez an actual chance because I really haven't gave, given him a chance. But I feel like if you do give Brook Lopez a chance, because of how good he is, going to be able to compete on the defensive end, uh, defensive end of the court. I think Brooke Lopez is at least B tier, borderline A tier. I'm going to put him in A tier right now just because of his potential. A couple things that scare me is the 69 vertical, the 70 acceleration. Those are just a couple of things that scare me, as well as his inability to handle the ball. But I think his potential is definitely there. Big country, Bryant Reeves is terrible in 2K. How terrible? Well, let's talk about it. I mean, he, he came available in triple third offline. He only has 23 base, 24 base bad, just one on Bron, 73 speed, 73 lateral crease. The more I want Brian Reeves to be good, the more I look at his stats and think this card is literally terrible. He might be F tier. Like, he probably is the worst player at D tier. Give me Ben Wallace over him. Give me Bam, Andrew Bogut, Al Horford. Give me them all over him. This Brian Reeves card was terrible. The fact that we literally got him just over a month ago in Triple Threat Offline is sad because this dude is absolutely terrible. He might even go down in a 2F tier. Birdman Chris Anderson is our next card today. We actually got a very usable Chris Anderson card in my team. I know only 24 base badges, but if you just look at his stats, not terrible. I mean, his 83 ball is just fine, 81 speed defensively pretty solid defend you look at the badges solid as well or gold bullet passer glue hands gold catch and shoot is all he needs jump shot 35 is serviceable enough release if you are looking for a center and you know beloved birdman in real life he's a fun card to use in my team not only that he's a usable card in my team the card is not terrible at all christian wood i feel like is a card that whenever we get a christian wood people get excited about right and the, and the big reason people get excited is because he does have the ray allen base if we ever get a Christian Wood that is like a glitched uh, card that can play some defense, he's going to be a top big in the game. I'm just throwing that out there. Like, let's say uh, in the middle of February, we get a glitched Christian Wood with the Ray Allen base, 6, 10, 7, 3 wingspan. He is going to be able to hoop in my team. This Christian Wood offensively is immaculate. Defensively, he's going to get sizzled like a piece of bacon. Next up, we do see Clint Capella, and I don't know, there's some people that really do like using Clint Capella, like really enjoy his cards. I don't know if I'm one of them. Yes, his speed is fine, lateral quickness is fine, interior rebounding, it's all fine. But is he next level good at anything outside of his great defensive badges, which, I mean, he doesn't even have Hall of Fame Interceptor. I just don't see it. Do I think Clint Capella is bad? No. Do I think he's quite as good as Andre Drummond? I don't think so. I think he is on that same level, but I do think he is that little bit worse than a guy like Andre Drummond. Dave Cowens, guys. He is immaculate. Dave Cowens might be the best player at A tier. If only he had more total badges. And I know that's something that's not easy to complain about because he does have 27 badges and a lot of them are defensively. But if we would have seen Dave Cowens with like, you know, 40 badges... Then we're talking because he does get a decent release, jump shot one, fundamental dribble style. Obviously, he can't handle the ball. Great interior, great rebounding stats. So Dave Cowens wasn't quite the next level good. If we do get a next level good Dave Cowens card, just expect him to be absolutely incredible. D Rob, I'm sorry, is still A tier. He's not the best center in the game anymore. And I'll be the first one to admit that. And I love David Robinson. It's hard for me to say that. But he's just not quite the best anymore. Don't be surprised, guys, if we get a new D-Rob soon. I mean, this D-Rob came out nearly two months ago. Don't be surprised if in the next month or so we get a new David Robinson. Because if we go back to last year or past years, I mean, we got what? 
two more David Robinsons, right? And this David Robinson came out on February 19th and the prior one came out on November 10th. November 10th. Don't say I'm kind of leaking the sauce, but I'm leaking the sauce that we might get a David Robinson within the next couple of months. And he is going to be absolutely incredible. Obviously, we got to get Will and Kareem first, but just know he's going to be up there. DeAndre in at the top of A tier. I don't know why DeAndre Ayton is so good. I I don't I can't even I can't even sit here and tell you guys. I don't have the I don't have the information behind it because he shouldn't be as good as he is. Maybe it's the fact that his player model is elite. Maybe it's the fact that he can literally do everything on the court, can shoot, can defend, can get me paint stops, can rebound the ball, has incredible defensive badges. I don't know. Right now, he's my backup center, though. Forget KG. Right now, DeAndre Ayton is my backup center. Obviously, we got, yeah, obviously, we got some new uh, cards that can do a lot of things with Anthony Davis. Heck, even the new uh, Ha Sing Jin that is coming Tuesday. Obviously, we did get Joel Embiid, who we are, are also pretty high on. There's a lot of good centers in my team, but as far as a guy that can compete with all of them, I think DeAndre Ayton's up there. So the Andre Jordan card was a free card that came out a long time ago and I actually enjoyed using the free card for a while. The problem is that was for a while. DeAndre Ayton at this stage is F2. I mean, there's nothing that card does on the court. At this stage, the dude is literally F2. The dude is literally worthless. Boogie Cousins is not worthless, but he's not next level good. He's not S tier. He's definitely A tier. Definitely up there at A tier. Probably maybe the best player at A tier, right, with DeAndre Ayton. At least that and badge wise. I've just never loved a Marcus Cousins cards in my team. Like objectively, this card should be incredible. Again, defensively not great, but should be really incredible. It's just I've never loved a Marcus Cousins cards. Maybe eventually there'll be a card that'll be game breaking and I'll be a big fan of it. It's just this card doesn't do it for me in Demarcus Cousins. It's crazy that this Diamond Academy Tembo that came out that long ago to me is still B tier. A lot of it has to do, and I'll be, I'll be the first to admit it, a lot of it has to do with his player build. Another center that we probably will get pretty soon is Dikembe Mutombo. A lot of it has to do with his player build. You want a guy to stop Yao Ming? When we get a new Dikembe, watch out. He will be able to. But that guard can still get paint stops. I mean, interior-wise, still going to be solid. Shooting-wise, going to be solid. It's just he's slow. It's really the only problem with him. But I still put him at B tier. I am still pretty high on Dikembe Mutombo. Is Dwight Howard A tier? I mean, I don't know. At, at this stage, I, I just don't know if he quite is. October 22nd. I don't I don't think so. I do not think Dwight Howard's as good as Andre Drummond. I don't think he's as good as Bill Russell, Bob McAdoo. I think he's a B tier card, right, with all these other inside centers and Andre Drummond and Clint Capella. He's good. Dwight Howard's fine. Or he was good, I should say. Problem is he's just outdated. For a time, he was definitely the best interior big in the game. And I, if you argue that, you probably have an invalid argument. But that time is over for big Dwight Howard. We're probably going to have to move some things around, move some guys down, because George Mikan at A tier seems crazy to me. George Mikan is solid. There's no if ands, or buts or, uh, about it. But is he A tier with our current list? Yes, but overall, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I feel like bad if he's at A tier and, and, and there's cards that might you know, be just as good that aren't. So I'm going to move some, move some pieces around here just a little bit. I'm just going to move uh, some pieces around a little bit. Dwight's going down. Clint Capella is going down. Let's see. Who from A tier do I think deserves to be here? I, 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 is George Mikan as good as Boogie? No. Is he good? I, I got to move George Mikan down for the time we're in Bill Russell. I still think is there. I think I like this a little bit more. I think this looks a little more balanced as well. George Mikan's not terrible. One of the best players at B tier. It's just he's only 6'10", going to get mashed. Hakeem Olajuwon still for today's game. I'm going to go S tier with. And I didn't lock in for Hakeem, but I've played plenty of competitive my team to know what Hakeem gets into. Especially on the defensive end of the court. Absolutely incredible. There's just something about him, and I do not like his release, but there's something about him that he can just hold it down with the likes of the best centers in the game. Something about this Hakeem that, I mean, longevity-wise, he's got compared to like a Kevin Garnett type of card. DeAndre is knocking on that door, though. I don't think he's quite as good, but he is knocking on that door. Jaron Jackson Jr., as much as I like you, I don't love you. You're B tier. I don't love you. I like you a lot, though. 6'11", 7'4", wingspan. A lot better on current gen than next gen. Just a complete center, honestly, in this game. Again, a lot better on current gen than next gen. But if you do want JJJ, go ahead and pick him up. 
Moments Joel Embiid. Now the pink diamond Joel Embiid, he was okay, man. 71 speed, not great uh, laterally, but could compete on the interior. I think he was a B or so tier center, probably. B or so caliber center. Now the new Galaxy Opal Joel Embiid. Now we're talking about a top big in the game. Forget being A tier. He is the top big in the game or up there for being the top big of the game. Again, Chris Stapps, yeah, obviously AD are up there as well, but Joe Lambeed is every bit as good as those guys. This card can do no wrong on the court. Absolutely immaculate is Joe LMB. Joe Val, I'm not even pulling him. I'll pull up his stats for you. This card, like I like watching Joe Val in real life. The dude is an absolute bruiser. This card is dirt, man. This card is literally dirt. Is he objectively worthless? I mean, he's got set shot 16. Yes, he's worthless. He can shoot, but barely. This dude is literally worthless. Kareem, I guess Kareem is tall. I mean, the difference between Kareem and Joval is like, at least with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, like you're getting some Hall of Fame defensive badges. You're going to compete a little bit better. Like Joval does nothing. Kareem's also 7-2. Again, I, we are due for a Kareem card. And I feel like the next Kareem, I'm, I'm trying to think about a Kareem that we, we, we're going to get in the middle of the year. I just can't think about it. Like, when was the Kareem we saw in the middle of the year last year? We didn't really see one. This is the closest one on December 18th. But, I mean, they didn't juice him. They just made him average. Kareem is due for a card. And if we get a good Kareem card, expect him to be the top center in the game. KG, I'm still going S tier with. We might have to limit how many players at S tier. But it's like they're all in one group right now. I mean, they, they really are. Maybe Joe and Embiid, AD, have a separate, uh, separate themselves over the guys at S tier with them. And I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to have to move some people down because I think those guys do indeed separate themselves. So we're going to move some people down. This is going to get interesting, to say the least. going to get very interesting here um, all the way around. But, I mean, look, it's got to be what it's got to be. we got to throw some. Kareem's not worthless. He's okay. But we got to throw some guys that I just wouldn't use down into F tier. Going to have to move some guys in B tier down. This is the tough part. Who at B tier am I least highest on? Probably, I do not like this Joel Embiid card really too much. The rest, I can't really move around. But that means basically everybody, well, not everybody. There's going to be have to, have to be some people that drop. I guess Bill Russell can drop. Sabonis is going to have to drop. Callens, Aiden, Max. I'm fine with this. And then we're going to go boom, boom, boom. Okay. Jin, I'm, the reason I'm doing this is because there is a separation between that top gap and the second gap. And, and that's just the way it's got to be. Kevin McHale. I, when Kevin McHale first came out, guys, people wanted to compare Kevin McHale to KG. And stat-wise, I see it. I mean, player model, I see it. But the problem is the set shot three on this card just ruins him. I mean, it just ruins him. The card still is not terrible. Still probably a B-tier caliber player with his badges, but I'm just not the highest on him. Chris Tapps, another player that belongs in S tier, unquestioned, undoubtedly. Some people like Chris Tapps is the best center in the game. Some people don't. I'm still trying to figure out everything, and I really have no idea. But here's the deal. You give him Monty Williams and that plus five speed, the interior perimeter boost, a rebounding boost, he becomes a even better big in the game. I'm in love with Chris Tapps, especially given his speed, vertical, interior shoe. You're looking at the best stretch big probably in the game. Up there with Joel Embiid and A. Disney. I mean, is LaMarcus Aldridge a perfect fit for C tier? Is he a perfect fit for C tier? A card that, I mean, when you look at it, is LaMarcus Aldridge great? No. Pretty slow, pretty lackluster. Pretty comparable to Andrea Bargnani, though. Who we actually, where's where's Andrea Bargnani at? Is he at, he's down here at D tier. I'm sorry, Aldridge. If I got Pink Diamond Joel at, at C tier, you've got to even go down to D tier, which, I mean, it is kind of sad to me. I'm actually going to move Bill Walton up just because I think he is that little bit better uh, than a guy like LaMarcus Aldridge. So that's where we're at right now. Marcus Gasol up next, a perfect addition to our A tier. I will be the first to admit I do not love Mark Gasol, not one bit. But here's the deal. You give Monty Williams, who is my coach. You guys are wondering, well, Ty, everybody just, you're just giving money to everyone. Well, that's my coach. I want to show you guys. He gets great interior, great rebound, and great speed. Again, at 7'1", the wide player model. We need people at today's game that can compete on the interior of Mark Gasol camp. Do I love the card? No. Do I think he's as good as d -Rab? No, but I think he is pretty close to that level. Is Marcus can be a garbage man or is he okay? Let's let's just look at things, okay? 6'11", can't shoot, pretty slow. Only, uh, he is 6'11", defensively he's okay. 
Marcus Camby is probably C-tier. I mean, objectively, if Dwight Howard is C-tier, Marcus Camby is C-tier. I don't love the card, though. Don't think he's great. But again, on the defensive end, he is going to be solid. Maybe he's not as good as Dwight. He probably is not. I can't, I can't go C-tier if Andrew Bogut. Like, Andrew Bogut is better than Marcus Camby. I, I do not care what anybody says. He is better than him. Even though he's slower, he's taller, going to be able to compete better on the defensive end of the court. If they're both D tier caliber players. Yao Ming, another S tier addition for us, guys. Is there anything more I need to say? He is 7 6, can shoot. Look, I don't even have Yao yet. I need to get him. But if you badge him up right, you make it happen for Yao. You boost the speed a little bit. He's, an, he's a complete card. People are going to hate on Yao while they want. Just know he's going to be on 250K teams at least until we get, you know, the Kareem Will to the world. Then maybe Yao will be replaced. Mitchell Robinson is not good. Here's the deal. Mitchell Robinson had potential to be absolutely elite. Potential is the big word. The reason he's not is because he has 52 speed. Even if they would have given him a 70 speed, this car would have been solid. The 52 speed doesn't do it for me. Another D tier addition for us. Moses Malone, I think, just based off what I'm thinking, is A or is B tier. Just because... People can hype up Moses, say he's A tier, but nobody, when it gets down to it, is using this Moses Malone card. Even if you do boost the speed, you boost uh, the three ball, you make him a little bit better, nobody's using Moses. It's just the way it is. Still, in my opinion, that B tier level. Smiles Turner, a perfect addition into C tier. Miles Turner had his time in 2K. The problem being, that time was a long time ago. Yeah, October 25th. It's a little bit slow, a little bit not great laterally. I mean, vertical is not great. Still has a good release. Still going to stretch the floor. It's just, I mean, at this stage, not that next level good. Nate Thurman up next, who I am really, really high on. Now, the problem with Nate Thurman is the fact that he's only 6'11". If he would be 7'7", oh my goodness. Can't really shoot that well. But look at it. Great speed, great interior defense, great defensive badges. He's a card that is slept on in the my team community because he can handle the ball a little bit as well. I'm not going to sit here and hype up Nate Thurman and say, you know, he's the top big in the game. But I do think he's at least B tier and on the verge of being A tier. And you know what? I'm putting him at A tier. I think Nate Thurman is that next level good as far as interior centers. I really do. I'm a pretty big fan. Jokic card for today's game, guys, is literally worth this. If you're using this Jokic, seek immediate medical attention this card stinks Vucevic isn't much better now Vuce I mean I get it he got a really good three ball his speed is decent I mean the problem is 80 interior he will literally not play any defense for you he's not quite that C tier level C tier and above guys are playable that's that's what I had to do different on this list I'd say C tier and above are playable cards Rafe I think is that a little bit better we're gonna throw Rafe in to C tier I still got Wang on this list so hey and remember, we're getting a really good wang on Tuesday. Remember that 6'11", pretty slow. Like Vucevic, not going to play much defense. He does have a little better release. I like him just that little bit more than Vuce. Maybe it's biased putting Rafe in C tier. If it is, you guys can leave that down below in the comments. Gobert, a card I really have not looked too in-depth in, but I mean, guys, Gobert as an interior big is not bad at all. You give him the speed boost. Interior gets a 99, 99 rebounding, incredible defensive badges, 7 one immaculate player build. He's an interesting card. Rudy Gobert is interesting. I'm going to throw him in here with some of the interior bigs, but you want to put him at B tier. I don't hate it. I do not hate it if you do want to include Rudy Gobert at B tier. Problem is he only has 22 base badges. We had a better Gobert. I mean, look, he would be, just more total badges, he would have been even better. Just lacks the total badges. Serge Ibaka, is Serge B tier or A tier? That's really the question of the day. And I think the more I use Serge Ibaka, the, the more I realize, like, yes, he lacks a little bit of stuff considering he's only 6'10". But on the offensive end, is a stretch big, I think he's good enough to put into that A tier. Like, here's my thing. If we're putting Marc Gasol in A tier, Serge Ibaka belongs in A tier. The card's by no means perfect, but his release is good. And he's going to compete on the defensive end of the court. I wish he had, you know, maybe more playmaking badges, but he does come with a bullet passer. I do like Serge that little bit more than like a Jaron Jackson Jr. for today's game. Big Wang here. No, no, that is not Wang. Let's let's get Wang up here because I'm, I'm just intrigued to talk about Wang. I'm going to go out on a limb and throw Wang into B tier. Here's the deal, why, or here's, the, here's the deal, guys. This Wang card, not great. 
Okay, I'll say it. But it can shoot the ball incredibly. Defensively, he's going to compete better than a Rafe LaFrance. And has a really smooth release and jump shot 28. Ha Sing Jin. I mean, guys, the problem with Ha Sing Jin is he is literally slower than a, a snail. He's so slow, can't really shoot. He's a giant, though, at 7'3". I guess I'll put him right. I can't. I'm going to put him at D tier. I don't even think he belongs in that elite C tier. But yeah, Wang, look, when we get the new Wang, expect him to be S tier. Shaq, I'm sorry, guys. I don't see what y'all see in Shaquille O'Neal. Even when he's evoed, I don't see it. He gets tired super quickly. He can't shoot the ball. Look, man. I get it as an interior big. Maybe you want to run Shaq. I, I just don't see it. I think this Shaq, if you are going to run Shaq, get this one, badge him up completely. But I just don't see what y'all see in Shaq. He can be a B tier because he is a load, but I do not see it. Tim Duncan, A tier. I like Tim Duncan way more than Shaq. Maybe it just has to do with the badges. I mean, quite honestly, Tim Duncan badge-wise is way more complete. But even on the defensive end, Gonna be better than Shaq. Tim Duncan, another card that maybe we'll see in the next couple of months. And if we see a Galaxy open Tim Duncan, he might be the man with the plan at that center position. Wes Sunso, the card I don't hate, but the problem is, I mean, at this stage of my team, he's just not necessarily that next level good. I don't hate him at all. I think he's got a smooth release, pretty decent on defense, just not that next level good. Wes Sunso, a C tier card. Last but certainly not least, guys, we do have the Pink Diamond, Will Chamberlain. I think he's very comparable to Rudy. Now, obviously, Rudy's going to maybe do some things better. Badge-wise, pretty similar. I just, I think these cards all the way around are similar. I mean, obviously, Wilt has a better player build, and I can't wait to get another Wilt. But, I mean, the cards are similar. Obviously, Rudy has a little better defense. Wilt, maybe when you told, fully badge him up, is going to be a little bit better. Wilt has maybe a little better player model. They go back and forth. Whatever card you like more, I'm fine with it. This is our tier list, guys. I wanted to make S tier just the most elite of elites. I have a lot of players up here, you know, at that A and B tier. And then C tier and above, honestly, are still usable in my team. I'm sure I messed up somewhere on this list, so leave it down below in the comments. Who do you guys feel is the most misplaced? Drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you are new. And as always, man, I love you guys. Have a blessed day.